Hey guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. And today we're checking out the hospital of San Pau. As a tour guide, the one question I always get is, is it worth it? I can't always answer that question for you, so I figured I'd let you see for yourselves, and then you can decide. Before we get started, if you're new here, welcome. My channel is all about getting you ready for your next trip to Barcelona and keeping you connected after you leave. So if you like what you see, hit subscribe so you won't miss out on any of the videos to help you make the most out of your trip in Barcelona. Sitting just down the street from Barcelona's Sagrada Familia, the Hospital de San Pau is the largest modernist complex in Europe. A UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1997, a visit to the modernist zone shows you the work of the father of the Catalan Art Nouveau movement, Lluís Domenic y Montané. Built between 1902 and 1930, the hospital was groundbreaking, not only architecturally, but for its scientific development. But before this hospital existed, a different hospital served as the city's care center and for six centuries took care of Barcelona citizens. We're inside the old hospital of the Holy Cross, which was the hospital set up in the Raval in that 15th century. Started in 1401, the first stone was actually placed in 1401 by King Martin which was that stone just right back there. And it took almost 50 years for this to be complete. It was finished in 1450, making it the hospital of the city. Now one of the main reasons that this hospital was set up and unifying the six smaller hospitals that were here were because of the plagues that came through during those 14, that 14th century. What you have basically were waves of plagues coming through that are going to kill a large portion of the population here in Barcelona. So you needed more space and one bigger space would make it easier to care for all of those people. One of the saints that came around in even the 16th century and is still celebrated today, every August 16th, since 1589, these celebrations have been going on, is San Roque. You actually can see the statue just behind me, right here. San Roque comes over in 1583 to Barcelona, and as he's making his way through the city, he falls ill from the plague. The problem is that everybody inside of the city having remembered what had happened that past century, just ignores him. And the only thing that really doesn't is gonna be the baker's dog. You can see that statue right there with the baker's dog right in it, is the way that St. Roque is going to survive. He's actually gonna survive off of basically the donations and the bread that the dog brings him so he can continue to eat despite being ignored by the rest of the population. When San Roque survives, doesn't pass that plague on to anybody else, he becomes celebrated. Like I said, started in 1589, still celebrations that we have in front of the cathedral today. One of the issues with the hospital was always raising funds, and there are actually two royal decrees that allowed for the hospital to continue to make money to be able to take care of all of the poor. The first was right after opening, it was allowed to basically take the ownings and the properties of the people that had passed away that didn't leave wills and that would come into the control of the hospital right here. The second was much later in the 16th century, actually granted by Philip II, the king at the time, who opened up the first theater, and the only theater in Barcelona until that 19th century that was allowed to have plays. And so it was actually known as the right of comedies, basically, where they made money from that teatro principal as we call it, just off of La Rambla. Now this was the hospital until 1930. The Hospital of St. Paul wasn't actually going to be ready until then. So this was the place that they still brought those, those poor or even the beggars over here. And I always say it's unfortunate that it lasted this long because one of the last people to pass away here was Antoni Gaudí. 
Gaudi died in 1926. It was actually June 10th, 1926. After crossing the street and not looking both ways, he was unfortunately hit by a tramp, brought here to the hospital of the Holy Cross, and he passed away in that room just right behind me. Finally closed in 1930, the old hospital of the Holy Cross now houses the National Library of Catalonia. Population growth and a rise in industrialization at the end of the 19th century saw a rapid shift in Barcelona. A larger hospital, preferably outside of the city center and away from the factories where the air was purer, saw a move to the Eixample. So let's get back to San Pau. The name Hospital de la Santa Creu y San Pau comes from a combination of the former hospital and the name of the man who left behind the money to build a new hospital for charity, Pau Gil. The architect chosen to lead the project was Luis Domenech y Montané, who studied the top hospitals of the day for inspiration. Upon his death in 1923, his son Pero would finish his father's work by 1930. The modernist complex we see here today holds 27 of the originally planned 46 pavilions and takes up nine city blocks. So we're inside the modernist enclosure that is the hospital and it's absolutely incredible. Uh, nobody's around and just the architecture. I'm gonna try to get you some views, but it's absolutely incredible what was able to be done with all of these different pavilions and just all of the modernist detail that goes into this architecture here. out in front of the administrative center you can see behind me and we're only inside of the modernist enclosure and it takes up an enormous amount of space in the city if you think about it the entirety of the hospital which has different uh, places to study and obviously the hospital that actually functions still today that takes up nine entire city blocks in Barcelona and the modernist section alone is massive. Think about how much that takes up in the entirety of, of this Eixample. What's really cool about the entire construction is that if you look at how the layout of the Eixample is and its very gridded pattern, these buildings are all built on 45 degree angles, basically, compared to the rest of it. And the architect, Domenech Montané, is trying to do that to get a little bit more circulation and also for sunlight as well. So you can notice a breeze while we're out here, even though it's super hot. Uh, but more than anything, the buildings are going north-south. So they've got that east-west sun action all the time. And that's gonna give the patients basically just more light. The other thing is, what you've already seen is all the colors. Crazy. But the idea, you know, shouldn't be a white hospital where people are trying to basically recover. The idea was to give them some green spaces uh, and colors just so that they're happy and maybe can, uh, you know, get better faster. Now we're inside the main entrance basically, and what it is is just filled with modernist style architecture, modernist uh, materials and everything. So what we're seeing is a lot of this brick you can see behind me, this tiling with all the different symbols from the Santa Creo, the Holy Cross, the four bars of the Catalan flag, the names of the patrons of the place, along with the architect, the years everything was built, put in ceramic and, and tiles. Uh, all sorts of different materials they were using during this modernist period, right at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. So we get into little rooms like this, and 
nothing stops, surprising me. I'm, I mean, I did research before coming over here, but still am amazed just walking in and seeing the different things. We're talking about modernism, uh, a lot of Gothic overtures. We saw the gargoyles and everything. And now we're in this room and you look up and you've got this Islamic influence that's thrown in there as well. It's covering the ceilings. everything from the outside and it's all decorated but you get into rooms like these and it's completely covered in all of that tile that we're talking about that what we call trancadiz which is to break tranca in catalan to break becomes these broken tile mosaics that are all around inside this room As patron saint of Catalonia, St. George is represented all around the city, but takes on a different meaning here. Legend has George killing the dragon, symbolizing good over evil, Christianity over paganism. But in the hospital, George's triumphant victory over the beast is medicine vanquishing illness. Now that you've seen the hospital, it's up to you. Leave a comment below and let me know if you're gonna come on your next trip or if you've already been. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.